opportunity yeah. to, yeah. to us. Yeah. Realizing, oh God, that it wasn't anything so good or so great that we've done. But it was because of your grace and your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. You allowed us one more opportunity to be in this place. Yeah. God, we need to hear from you today. Yeah. Cultivate yeah. our minds and shift the atmosphere. Yeah. Allow us to be ready, oh God, for what it is you're getting ready to say. Hallelujah. God, set my soul on Holy Ghost fire. Yeah. Fill my cup, oh God, until I work more. Yeah. Allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O Lord, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Yes, and the yes. children of God said together, yes. Amen. 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 Good afternoon to all of you who have gathered in the Rivers of Life Church yes. to the Spirit of God that is in this place. Yes. To my brother and friend in his absence, your pastor, Pastor Langley, to Reverend Dante Murphy, and um, I don't want to get in trouble. His yellow honey boy. Right. <laughs> He's here with you. Amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. To the wonderful, wonderful members and officers of the Trinity and Zion Church. Amen. Who, am I, who I am so privileged to be able to pastor. Trinity, do me a favor. Stand just real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real this is our third service today. I tell them all the time, it's one thing to say you love somebody, yeah. but it's another thing to show them. Hey, yeah, yeah. Amen. And I want you to know that I love all of you very, very much. Yeah. To Rivers of Life Church, this is my third time or fourth time preaching for the Rivers of Life Church. And I pray that y'all have the same kindness that you had the three prior times. And I do believe in doing unto others as you would have them do unto you. So I'm going to amen every amen. now and then. Amen. amen, somebody. To all of those who are not members of Trinity, but guests that came with us, we thank you for joining us. And we pray that something may be said or done that will be a blessing to you. Amen. I was going to preach one message coming from 1 Kings 18, 21. And that reads, how long will ye halt between two opinions? If God be God, follow him. But if Baal be God, follow him. I was going to preach the sermon, it's time to make up your mind. But I was sitting here, and for some reason I went to Isaiah 38. Beginning at verse number one. I would ask that you would do according to your custom for the reading of the word. Amen. 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 So let's stand. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 38. Beginning at verse number one. And it reads, in those days Hezekiah became ill. And was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amaz, went to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order. Because surely you are going to die. You will not recover. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully. And with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and tell Hezekiah, this is what the Lord, the God of your father David says. I have heard your prayer. Somebody say, I heard your prayer. I heard your prayer. And seen your tears. And seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. This is the Lord's sign that the Lord will do what he has promised. Y'all yeah. will have the preachers out there. Yeah. Just for a few moments, let me worry your patience from a subject. There's so much to live for. Yeah. There's so much yeah. to live for. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, I challenge you this afternoon to take a moment and look back over your life. Yeah. All of us have dealt with times and situations in our life where 
it seemed as if life itself may have been over for us. All of us have either been in a sickness or dealt with a sickness where uh, the doctors have told us they've done all they could do. All of us have been in some situations where life has seemed to knock the life out of us and we found ourselves down and wondering, will things ever get any better? Uh, I can remember whenever I was growing up, I had this thing where I loved to watch wrestling and my mama would do this thing on my birthday because the Royal Rumble was in January. My birthday's in January. And she would order the Royal Rumble for me and I can remember whenever I was 10 years old, there was this one particular match that was between John Cena and Lou Mark. It was a last man standing match. And the match was going on, and it seemed like Umaga was going to beat John Cena. He had beat him down. Yeah. Had him to the point where it seemed like he was getting ready to say he quit. He couldn't go anymore. But what happened there was a strange turn of events. And if y'all remember you watched wrestling, y'all know Jim Ross had this thing where he would begin to yell, and he would say, well, we thought it was over, but it's not over yet. Yeah. Because in that time, in that moment, it seemed like John Cena got his second win. And he had came back and he took the ring rope. Y'all remember the match? Y'all sound like you do. He took the ring rope and he <laughs> took it and put it around uh, Umaga's neck and began to choke him. And it got to the point where the ref called the match. He had won. And I know some of you may be wondering, why in the world is any of this relevant this afternoon? But the reason I've got to tell you this is as we flip through the channels of your life story, you too have found yourself in some situations where you might have been counted out, yeah. where people thought you wouldn't make it, people yeah. thought it was the end for you, yeah. but the testimony that you have is that they thought it was over, but it's not over yet. Yeah. Uh, like my brothers and sisters puts us all in these places, even now if we, just, if we just be honest with ourselves, the place that we are in, in in our lives is a place that we probably thought we would never see. Who in the world thought in the 21st century that we would be living through a pandemic at the pandemic at the pandemic. It's amazing how things can change. One moment it seems like we're on top of the world. The next it seems like the world is on top of us. One place it seems like we are moving forward. Life happens and it begins to knock us back one second in our lives. The best is yet to come but the next we are asking who in hell left the gate open. Life is filled with ups and downs, trials and tribulations, storms and rains. But we who are believers in God must remember that even if there are some ups and downs even if there are some storms and rains, even if there are some times when we have to go through some trials, this is not the end of our story. Life will not end in this place. It's not over until God says it's over. And in fact, it's in those moments, it's in those seasons of life uh, when you've got to encourage yourself, you've got to speak over yourself and tell yourself, if I'm going through hell, i got to keep on going. Uh, yes, I might be in it, but I'm there. God allowed me to get in. He can bring me. Yes, I might be dealing with the storm, but I know that if God allowed me to go through the storm, at some point He will be my shepherd. Yes, I might be dealing with some trials and tribulations, but I know that this race is not given to the swift, nor the power to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. And I don't know who I'm helping bring you in, but somebody needs to know that you're close. Uh, you're too close to your blessing to give up in the midst of the battle. You're too close to give up in the midst of the storm. Don't you stop. Peace 
the creating the real question that we would have to ask is what would we really need God for? Uh, but every now and then we've got to find ourselves in a place where God has to show us that He's still in charge. It's not about how good you think you are, it's about how the God, how good the God you serve is. Uh, but here we find Hezekiah is at the point of death. He received word to get his house in order. That surely he was going to die. Uh, Real Murphy, uh, Hezekiah does something here. I love what he does. He doesn't do like some of us would do. Some of us would have called everybody we can think of and tell them, oh, the Lord said that I'm getting ready to die. I got to get my house in order. It would have been all over Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It would have been a TikTok about it. Uh, but Hezekiah doesn't do that all. Hezekiah does here. Somebody needs to catch this thing. Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and he begins to pray. I came to put, uh, push you a little bit this afternoon, so can I take the first point from here? Uh, one thing you've got to realize in remembering that there's so much more to live for, you've got to realize that you have power in your prayers. Hezekiah has a conversation with God or miss having a conversation with himself. And it's something about when you talk to God and you have God's attention that things begin to happen in your situation. You ever been dealing with something and decided to pray about it and as soon as you prayed about it, it seemed like a weight has been lifted off of you. The reason why it feels like a weight has been lifted off of you is because when you pray, your prayer is the vehicle that transfers your needs to God. And I know this might not be deep, I know this might not make you shout, but I can remember a long time ago, my mom would say, when you pray and you pray right, things will start to happen to you. She says, situations will start to change. Bodies will start to be healed. When you get into the place where you have God's attention, you will get to see how God will start to move. Uh, Hezekiah heard the message telling him that he was going to die, but although Hezekiah heard the message, he took what was given to him, and he gave it back to God. Somebody missed that thing. Hezekiah heard the message that he was getting ready to die, and instead of Hezekiah worrying about it, Hezekiah took that thing and he put it back in God's hand. Uh, now, when was the last time you had a bill that you didn't know how you were going to pay, and you fell down on your knees and said, God, this is your bill. You had to uh, when was the last time you've been sick in your body and you didn't think you were going to get any better? And you fell down on your knees and said, God, you said in your word about, about my sickness, you said by your stripes, I'm already healed. I mean, when was the last time you didn't know how you were going to get through, but you fell down on your knees and told God, God, you said uh, that you would keep me in perfect peace uh, and if I keep my mind stayed on you. Uh, then the guy will remember the power in his prayers. Uh, he took what was given to him uh, and he placed it back before God. Uh, who I'm preaching to right through here. When somebody needs to know that the prayer didn't stop it, now I let me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. No, baby, use that power that you have. So Hezekiah, after receiving this word, he turns his face to the wall and he begins to pray. He remembers the power of his prayers. But see, then Hezekiah does something that blows my mind. As Hezekiah is praying, my Bible and your Bible will say that Hezekiah puts God on the spot. About what he's saying. The Bible says that Hezekiah starts calling out the list. He asked God, God, you remember. I walk faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done good in your eyes. And as Hezekiah is saying, as the Bible says, he begins to weep. If I can use my imagination, I believe Hezekiah is saying, God, I did everything right. But you mean to tell me that I'm still getting ready to die. Have you ever been in that place where you're questioning God? I did what you told me to do. So why am I going through what I'm going through? God, I treated those people right. But why do they still treat me so bad? God, I'm trying to be the best husband or wife that I can. But why does it seem like my marriage is failing? God, I go to work every day. And I do my job to the best of my ability. Why am I still not receiving the promotion? And maybe I didn't come down your street. But I'm not the only one that's been in that place. I'm crying out and saying, I know I'm not the only one in this place that has cried out and said, Lord, I did what you told me to do, but I'm still going through some hell and some hot water. I know I'm not the only one in here that has cried out and said, God, why me? Point number two, a lot of us ask God why. But the point that I want you to take home with you is that your why is necessary. Listen here, listen here, growing up, I was always told that you don't question God. Amen. 
But as I got older, I realized that some things inquiring minds just need to know. Why is it that folk that don't care how they live seem to still prosper? Why is it that folk that try to do everything right seem to catch the most hell? There are some questions that need an answer. Why is it that we have to go through what we go through? Well, God spoke to me and he said, Ballard, the reason for your why is for you to understand what I'm doing. I was confused by this, so I had to ask him, God, what are you telling me? He said, in order for you, for me to show you what I'm doing in your life, the first thing I need you to do is watch how I work. I said, God's making sense to me now, but I need you to bring it home. He said, in order for me to take you to what's in store for you, first I've got to make sure you're ready for what's to come. And I stopped by on this uh, uh, divine assignment this afternoon to tell somebody that your why is necessary. God, why am I sick in my body when you told me that I'm already here because before I can heal you, I've got to take you through a process. God, why am I on this job where I'm doing the best I can, but it seems like I'm never going to get a, a promotion because before I can elevate you, I've got to make sure that you can handle the bottom before I take you to the top. God, why am I going through relationship after relationship and I still haven't gotten married yet because before I can send you a spouse, I've got to make sure that you appreciate the value that you have within yourself. Sometimes before God can bless you, God has to break you. So you may be wondering why, but in God's mind, God isn't wondering why. Shit. 
somebody that's going to help you, period. You have so much to live for. Every single one of us has an assignment. Every single one of us. I don't know what your assignment is. And I don't know the road that you have to travel to be able to get to your assignment. I don't. I don't. But what I do know is no matter how tough it gets, don't stop. Don't give up. Guess what, y'all? It's always darkness just before dawn. So that means on the other side of what you're going through, God has so many great things in store. Guess what, y'all? We can't get to that until we actually hear the gospel. It tells us that man that's born of a woman is what? Of a few days. And in those days, you're going to be what? It's going to be full of trouble. So if you think your life is going to be easy, take another look. I told him this morning, I said, listen, whenever you have some troubles in your life, that's when you know you're on the right track. Because if everything is easy, if the enemy doesn't have any work to do against you, that means one of two things. That means either he's he, either you're empty or he's already got you. A thief is not going to break into an empty house. But when he sees you have something on the inside of you, when he sees that there's something greater for you, Try to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah, but God said His word today. Let you know that you have so much more to live for. Yeah. I'm sorry, y'all, we didn't get the shout. Maybe we'll shout next time. It's all right. It's the third service today. Somebody's tired, and that's me. But God didn't send His word for shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Go outside, show to the world. But God said his word because somebody needed to hear that thing. Somebody was on the verge of giving up. Somebody was on the verge of hanging their hat and not going back to pick it up again. Somebody was on the verge of throwing that towel in. But God said his word today to let you know you have so much more to live for. Do me a favor, by your head, close your eyes. We get ready to go. Whatever it is you need from God. I want you to purchase that thing on your heart. I want you to put it on your mind. Because guess what? Just as you believe it, God said it would do it. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this moment that you have given us to dwell amongst the land of the living one more time. Because God, every opportunity that we get amongst the land of the living, God, is another opportunity that you've given us to get it right with you. God, we know that there's some things that we may be facing. There's some things that we may be dealing with. There's some things that we may be going through. God, some of us may have dealt with something that we couldn't handle. But God, we come in this moment, in this hour, to give it all to you. God, we need you to step in. We need you to intervene. God, we need you to make some ways. God, we need you to do some things. And God, we're believing that whatever it is we're asking of you, God, that you're going to do it for us. Just like you sent your word, oh God, to Hezekiah. Some of us need to get our house in order. Because God, we've been out of the ark of safety for too long. We've been doing things the way we wanted to do them for too long. But God, we realize in this season of our lives that you're calling us for a greater work. You're calling us, oh God, to go higher in you. So take us, oh God, where you want us to be. God, restore unto us the joy of our salvation. God, anoint us afresh. God, strengthen your people. Somebody here is dealing with the sickness. 
Somebody here is dealing with a situation that has them bound. God, we know you to be a healer. We know you to be a deliverer. So do, oh God, what only you can do. We love you, God. And we thank you so much for loving us. Move by your power in this place. Do what only you can and only you can do. We love you, God. Thank you so much for loving us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Somebody give God some praise in the end. Thank you. Yeah. Now, to him that is able to keep you. Yeah. Let you present your faultless before the presence of 